the Fleck 5600 12-day softener and 12-day backwash look basically the same from the front. But if you look in the back, with the covers off, you'll see the water softener has a white cap main piston, has a brine valve, also has a brine cam gear which will open and close the brine valve at the proper times. The backwash valve has a black top extended rinse piston, no brine cam gear, and no brine cam valve. If you want to convert a 12-day 5600 softener valve into a backwash only, the first thing I would do is take off the top power head, two screws here, one screw holding the main piston. As soon as you do that, you can slide it forward, up, and off. This will make it easy to work on the valve body where most of the changes need to be made. The next step in converting the valve is to remove the three screws, which took me a minute to unscrew because they were really tight, off the top plate. Plate slides straight up. Now, I'm going to pull the main piston out. Seals and spacers are going to try and come up with it, but we're not changing those, so we just want to push them right back down. Don't forget this little top seal here. Get them back down. And in place of the softener piston, we're going to put the backwash piston. And it's just a slight difference in the openings here that give it a slightly longer backwash time than the softener piston. Softener piston would work, it just wouldn't give you as long a backwash time. And then we will not leave the brine valve. So just kind of wiggle that and pull hard. Make sure the bottom o-ring doesn't come out with it. That sitting down there in the hole. And actually, since we're not going to use the brine valve, uh, we could pull that out of the hole altogether. Let me get that out. This is the one you got to watch out for when you're rebuilding your softener and make sure you get it back in the hole correctly. But we're just taking it out because we've got a plug to put in there and the plug has that o-ring on it already. It presses down into the hole sealing off where the brine valve was. So you remove the brine valve because you don't need it because you're going to back washing. You're not using any brine, you're not sucking anything out. And we're putting in the black top filter piston because it back washes a little longer than the white top softener piston that was in there. Okay, now we need to make several changes over here on the injector drain module. With the power head off, it's real easy to get a little crescent wrench on this brass fitting. This is to connect to the brine or salt line for the water softener. We're not going to be connecting to one, so we're going to take that out. It's got an o-ring on it. Your uh, brine flow control for refilling is embedded in there, but I said this is used for water softener. For backwash, we just put a plug. The old ones had a brass plug. They've been using these plastic plugs for many years now. And like I said, it has an O-ring on it. Just screws right in place, caps it off. No water should be going that direction anyway because you've got a plug in here. And uh, But this is just uh, another guarantee that water won't try to go this direction. Snug it up there. All right, now we're going to go inside here and uh, take out the injector and screen and plug that off just because we don't need, up oh, wrong size, don't need that for a uh, backwash only application. Any uh, Repair or change out on these 5600s require just simple hand tools you should already have. Quarter, three eighths, wrench, flathead screwdriver or two. And uh, there we go. Take the cap off there. 
And like I said, this injector screen, nice stainless steel screen. Since we're not going to be running anything in and out of this injector, we can just take that out. Don't need it. This has the number one white injector throat and nozzle. The nozzle is the big part. You need a nice big flat head screwdriver to unscrew that. And then down inside, see if you can see that. Get the right angle for you. There's a white throat. You get me a slightly smaller screwdriver, flathead screwdriver and go in there. Um, also, it should be noted, once you have this off, the module does separate from the valve body. And in this case, that might be the easier way to work on it. See, I can go down here, get it in the slot, spin it around about eight, ten times. That should be free. Now I'm going to turn it upside down. It drops right out. Okay, we do not need the throat because we're not causing, we're creating any suction. Uh, we're not using the injector. So there's this black plug. There's no solid through hole on this one, whereas your uh, regular injectors all have a tapered hole that is uh, designed to flow at various rates depending on what size tank you have. So we're going to put this black one in, find the threads. I like to do this with my fingers because it is plastic on plastic and the worst thing you could do is uh, cross thread this because then you have to get a new housing. So I've got it most of the way in there. I'm just going to snug it up. Just get it in there. There, it's snug. So now um, the drain flow button would go in here and uh, if you need to change that out, let me show you that too. Okay, uh, last step would, and last but not least is the drain flow button would be changed. If you're going from a softener to a backwash, you're going to need a higher flow rate. Typical softeners will have maybe uh, 1.5, 2.0, 2.4, 8, 9, 10 inch tanks. We have a nice tool that's made to do this job. It has slots, four slots that match up perfectly with the inside of this. You don't have to purchase it. You can carefully use a pair of needle nose pliers, grabbing firmly and slowly unscrewing. Now if this is an older system, it, you may have a hard time getting this to start coming out. It may have a lot of <coughs> calcium or other buildup, but if it's a new or relatively new valve, you can easily do this with a pair of needle nose pliers and finish it up with your fingers. This is your drain line flow control retainer, DLFC retainer. Inside is the button and uh, a small screwdriver, regular needle uh, Phillips, just something that will go down in the, into the center hole and you can just pull this right out. And then you're going to put your bigger one. This one is a seven gallon per minute and uh, the reference when you're putting these buttons in is we always put the numbers in first on these drain flow controls. So you just put it in there with your finger, push it all the way down, put your retainer back on, do it mostly by hand, and then at the end use your needle nose or if you got this nice handy dandy tool. Uh, the tool part's just the black part here. We've actually just put this on the end of a, a driver. You can you can do it with your fingers too. It's it's made to be handheld. Here at the shop, it's just a little easier to have it like that. So. We've removed the screen, we've put in a plugged injector nozzle, we've plugged off the uh, brine fitting, and we've removed and plugged the uh, brine valve assembly and changed to the filter valve. And now just put it back together, put the power head back on, and this is now a backwash only valve. Um, oh, there is one other thing you can do. Uh, you don't have to, but you can remove the brine cam gear if you want with the center screw. It's not going to be touching anything or doing anything, 
but uh, you can go ahead and pull that out. And if this was a backwash valve, this would already be missing as we showed you earlier. But it doesn't matter if, once the brine valve is removed, it doesn't matter if this gear is left in there or not. And if you have a backwash valve and you want to turn it into a softener, then of course you would do the reverse of everything you just saw me do. You would take out these parts and put in the water softener parts that we just removed. If you have any more questions, email us at support at softenerparts.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.